chicken. What is the integumentary system skin? The integumentary system consists of the skin and its accessory structures, including the hair, nails, sebaceous glands, and the sweat glands. Skin. The skin is the exterior covering of the body. It weighs more than six pounds in the average adult and covers more than th three thousand square, square inches. It is the largest organ of the body. It is supplied with blood vessels and nerves. Functions of the skin. The skin provides protection. It protects against invasion by bacteria and other harmful agents. It protects delicate cells beneath the surface from injury. It inhibits excessive loss of water and electrolytes. It produces a protective pigmentation to protect the body against excessive exposure from the sun. It helps produce the body's supply of vitamin D. Functions of the skin. The skin regulates body temperature. When the body is too cold, the skin's blood vessels constrict. This allows more heat carrying blood to circulate to the muscles and organs. When the body is too hot, the blood vessels in the skin dilate. That brings more blood to the surface for cooling by radiation. At the same time, sweat glands secrete more sweat that cools the body when it evaporates. Functions of the skin The skin provides sensations. It contains millions of nerve endings that act as sensory receptors of, for pain, heat, cold and pressure. When stimulation occurs, nerve impulses are sent to the cerebral cortex of the brain and the brain triggers any necessary response. Epidermis The skin has two layers. The epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis actually has four strata. The stratum corneum is the outermost strata of the epidermis. It is mostly dead cells filled with a protein substance called keratin. It is thicker of the soles, on the soles of the feet that, than on the eyelids, where there is less pressure. The stratum lucidum is a translucent layer lying directly beneath the corneum. It may not even exist in thinner skin. Cells in this layer are also dead or are in the process of dying. The stratum granulism is one of more layers of cells starting to die and become hard. They are in the process of keratinization, becoming fibrous protein similar to that in hair and nails. The stratum germinativum is composed of several layers of living cells capable of cell division. It is the innermost layer of the epidermis and contains melanin, the pigment that gives color to the skin. The more abundant the melanin, the darker the skin color. Damage to the layer, such as in se severe burns, requires skin graft. The dermis. The dermis is beneath the epidermis and is composed of connective tissues. It contains the lymphatics, nerve, nerve endings, blood vessels, sebaceous and sweat glands, elastic fibers, and hair follicles. The dermis. The dermis is divided into two layers, the, the papillary layer, the reticular layer. The papillary layer is arranged into microscopic structures that form ridges. These are the finger and footprints. The reticular layer is beneath the papillary layer. It is white fibrous tissue that supports the blood vessels. The dermis. The dermis is connected to underlying tissue by the sub subcutaneous tissue. The subcutaneous tissue or hypodermis is composed of adipose and connective tissue. It supports, nourishes, insulates and cushions the skin. The hair is a thread-like structure formed by a group of cells that develop within hair, follicle or socket. Each hair has a shaft that is visible and a root that is embedded in the follicle. A pilomotor muscle is attached to the side of each follicle. It is stimulated by skin irritants, emotional arousal or cold temperature and reacts by contracting. The contracting. This causes goose flesh or goose pimples. The hair. At the base of each hair, 
follicle is a bulb enclosing a loop of capillaries. It is called the hair papilla and provides nourishment to the hair. It is one of the few living parts of the hair and is responsible for hair growth. The hair. The transparent cuticle cover the hair shaft like shingles on a roof, protecting it from elements, chemicals and from losing moisture. The cortex provides most, most of the hair's weight. It contains melanin which provides color to the hair, stores oil, provides flexibility and elasticity and adds shapes to the hair. When the cuticle is damaged and exposes the cortex, hair looks dull and dry. The medulla is the inner hollow core that runs the length of the shaft. Sebaceous gland. Sebaceous glands are oil glands. They have tiny ducts that open into each hair follicle. Each sebaceous gland secretes sebum which lubricates the hair and skin. The amount of secretion varies with age, puberty and pregnancy. Nails. Fingernails and toenails are hard keratin structures that protect the ends of the fingers and toes. The nail root, also called the germi germinal matrix or nail bed, begins several millimeters into the finger and extends to S. The finger and extends to the edge of the white. Crescent shaped lunula. This is where the growth occurs appro approximately 1 mm per week. The under surface of the nail plate or body of the nail has grooves that help anchor it. The cuticle is also called the ap aponychium. It fuses the nail plate and the skin of the finger together to form a waterproof barrier. The hypokinium is under the free edge of the nail. It also creates a waterproof barrier fusing the skin of the finger to under underside of the nail plate. Ingrown nail. Ingrown nails are simply those that have curled down or around and are growing into the skin. They may become swollen and inflamed. Trim toenails straight across to avoid the growth pattern. Pseudoriferous gland. Pseudoriferous glands are sweat glands. About 2 million are distributed over the surface of the body, more numerous on the palms of the hands, soles of the feet, forehead, and axillae, or underarms. Pseudoriferous glands. Sweat glands produce sweat or perspiration. As sweat collects on the skin surface, it evaporates and creates a cooling effect. Sweat also rids the body of waste through the pores of the skin. As it accumulates, sweat may become odorous by the action of bacteria. The average person loses approximately half liter of fluid through sweating each day. Thank you.